I believe in soulmates. Strongly agree, strongly disagree? Answer in the comments below and suggest a prompt on our Kickstarter. I have dealt with like homophobic people just like anyone else and there's a lot I can handle but what I can't handle is seeing you hurt. We were pressured into getting married. Three, two, one, go. So we're Mormon, like LDS, and there's a lot of pressure in our church to get married, especially at our church school that we went to. Everyone gets married really fast. We got married after like five months because we wanted to and, you know, we loved each other. But I feel like it definitely, like there are like some more like societal pressures in that aspect. So that's why I don't like strongly disagree, but I mostly disagree because I don't feel like we were. Yeah, I feel like we were kind of not necessarily pressured to get married, but it's more pressured to date for marriage. But then once we met each other and told our families, they were like, hey, maybe you should slow down. So we we're more so pressured not to get married. But Yeah, I would say 0% pressure. Like when I first saw this woman, I was like, ooh, I got to get to know you, girl. And I, honestly, we had both been through broken homes before. We both come from divorced families. And uh, I, a big passion we have is having strong, a strong marriage. And so I was just, I've never been more confident about anything in my life than Amber J. There was zero pressure. It was all pressure on me. Like, I gotta hope she's feeling no the same way because yeah. I'm feeling you. Yeah. <laughs> and we actually dated for less than a year as well. Yeah. But when you know, you know, right? I have some hot takes submitted by our audience. And so I'll read off the prompt and you'll agree or disagree with the prompts. Women do more work in marriages. I feel like no one should be doing more work than the other person in the marriage, personally. Um, I feel like in order for a marriage to work, you have to come at it equally. That might be just an idealistic view, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, like as a general statement, most of the women I know, and including the women who have raised me, had a job. They also took care of the kids, like most of the time. Most of the household chores also fell on, like, you know, on the woman. And I do just see that more often than not that women take on two jobs, literally. <laughs> I have considered divorce. You know, we learned this in a marriage class where there's a rhino and a hedgehog in every relationship marriage. And so Charlie's very much the rhino. He's like, let's tackle this now. We need to talk now. And for me, I'm a hedgehog. I need to withdraw. And so I think in those moments, I don't know, I think I'm more here. It's just like, well, you know, when you're in the heat of the moment, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I definitely know that our communication styles are totally different. We didn't communicate well at first. I know Kenzie comes from a divorced family and then saw their family just fight and yell a lot. I came from a family where if my parents had a disagreement, they fought with passive aggressive comments and closed doors. So having disagreements, having those uh, uncomfortable and hard conversations just wasn't easy for me at all. And so divorce sounds a heck of a lot easier than pushing through it, which luckily we did. We're doing great, we're happy now, but there definitely was a time where, yeah, it, it seems easier to just drop everything and move on instead of trying to grow. I am happy with how often we have sex. There's a hedgehog, there's a rhino, and then there's a rabbit. I feel like I'm the rabbit in this marriage. And my expectations and like my like sex drive is, I, my libido is very high, but it's always been that high. So we've, I came in honest, it was on the table. I feel like sometimes, you know, work and life get in the way of that, responsibilities, but I think, yeah, <laughs> we're trying to find a middle. You know, we're both here, it'd be, you know, I think if we had split, then it would be like evidence that we're not talking about it. <laughs> uh, but I think this, like, no, this is not a surprise to me, I don't think it's a surprise to you that we're like, we're both here, because it's, it's something we talked about. I think, yeah, I think it's like something we're working through, and it's just like, when you get married, you get into like this routine, you get into like just working and going, you know, and then at the end of the day, you're just like spent. We're both like really two ambitious people. And I think like sometimes it's the detriment of the household sometimes on both ends, not just you, but like, yeah. I want children. Three, two, one, go. 
if we could, we would have a baby yesterday. Yeah. But because we're, we're same sex, there's a lot of costs that go behind making a baby. So um, we bought a house last year and that was huge for us. Now kids are on the table and that's another, you know, $40,000 that you're looking at per kid. And if we want two, that's a house and then some, 80,000. So, and as women, our clock is ticking. The older we get, the less yeah. time we have to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's a little different. So we actually have like infertility struggles a lot. We've had three miscarriages. We actually just had one recently. And so it's like the topic of kids is like super sensitive to us. Cause like we actually like our miscarriage happened like last week and it was like really like hard cause we were so excited. We told our families and we were like so excited to like announce to everyone at Christmas and <laughs> sorry. It like breaks my heart because like, I know like it's bringing us closer together, but it's like one of the hardest things we've had to go through together <laughs> because it's like, I know Tyler's gonna be an amazing dad, but like I feel bad and some, like I, I feel bad because I've told him before, I'm like, it's fine if you like wanna go marry someone else and have kids because I know I can't provide that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been really hard to deal with just because like, it's not the most, like I guess accepting topic to talk about. I know a lot of people feel very awkward whenever that conversation does come up. Like my parents have tried to help us out, but don't really know how. Like it kind of makes me want to like be over there sometimes where I'm just like, no, it's not worth it. Like I don't like the heartache and the financial like struggles. It's just not worth it. But at the end of the day, it's like, I know it's worth it. I know this is where I want to be. I don't like my partner's family. Three, two, one, go. challenging. <laughs> Speak your truth. I know, I know. Um, I think there are, there are certain members of your family that I absolutely adore. It's okay. And I think there was a time and place where I really wanted to love your mom. And then there's a time and place where we just can't. I have very thick skin. I knew what I was like signing up for. Um, I've dealt with like homophobic people just like anyone else, and there's a lot I can handle, but what I can't handle is seeing you hurt. And that's the hardest part, because like, you're so amazing, and she's gonna miss out on so much. I mean, I totally understand why you're standing there. I wish you could stand here with me, but I was raised in a super homophobic family, and unfortunately, you can't really choose who you're born into, so I totally understand your frustration because I carry that frustration and I've carried that throughout my whole life. I... I'm shocked you're there. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. Um, I, think, I think this is a silver lining, right? Like when I married you, I gained a family. And even though I might disagree with certain points of view in your family, overall your family has been loving from the moment I stepped into your life. And I'm really appreciative of that because I feel like I put a lot of pressure on my friends because they are my family. But when I met you, I feel like your family filled in that hole. I think that's like the beautiful thing about marriage is that like you guys, you get to set like a new precedent. Like you get to set a new like standard for your family. And like, that's what's so beautiful about it. Like you don't have to take on, you know, what your family brought or what your family gave to you. You guys can make something new, so. There are things my partner doesn't know about me. Three, two, one, go. But for me, it's like, I've had like a lot of like hardships in my life that's like, it takes time to unlock, you know what I mean? And like talk about, and I feel like if I was like trauma dump, like, you need therapy too. I mean, you did trauma dump on me like before we met though. Like, oh yeah. We, we met on a dating app and her first messages to me before we were going on a date, she was like, by the way, I went through this, 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 and this <laughs> within the last like 12 months or so. I trauma dumped on you on our first date. So I was like, okay, if she's still here at the end of the day, then obviously I have to marry you. And like, here we sure. are. And I think if there's anything I don't know, it's the new things that we explore together, not necessarily super focused on the past, like what you ate on your third birthday, like probably don't know that, but like, you know, let's go explore something new because like this is, you're my future. I'm with my soulmate. Three, two, one, go. This is an interesting question. Uh, I think I have like a 
disagreement with the, the term soulmate. Uh, me being over here is not me saying that you're not the person that I'm supposed to be with. It's just me saying that like, I have so many opportunities to do so many different things and go down different roads in my life. And I chose this one. And then every day I'm gonna have to continue to choose this one. Yeah, I didn't know that's what soulmate meant to you. Um, yeah, first time hearing you explain it that way. I mean, for me, like soulmate is just someone you just know you want in your life. And when you and me got together, I was like, like there was just no fear. There was no, um, like there was just nothing else. Like I had no hesitation. Going back to the beginning, we talked about when you know, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like we did not meet by accident. It was definitely a divine <laughs> orchestrated event for us to cross paths since I grew up in LA and Charlie grew up in Detroit, Michigan. And so it was for a reason. Good marriages don't just happen, right? It definitely does take work, intentional time, but I wouldn't want to do it with anyone else, so. Jay is a lesbian. Um, you've known, you've loved women from like very, very beginning. I identify as bisexual. Before I met you, I never wanted to get married. When I was with women, maybe I wanted men. When I was with men, I, I wanted women. I, it just felt like there was always something missing. And then I met you and everything changed in my soul, in my body, in, in my choices. Like, and so I used to not believe in soulmates because I felt like how can, out of whatever billion people in this world, you just match with one and like the universe aligns. It's just too much work for the universe. Like I feel sorry for it. But when it works out, there's just no other explanation that so much inside of me can change by meeting one person. That is a wrap. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job.